I am fly, fly away. Don't look now, you might miss the magic. Look around, find your star and grab it on the way. On the way down. <laughs> First and foremost, yeah, welcome yeah. to the experience. That's how I started off right there. Yeah. Right, we go jump right into it. Yeah, sure I, go, like it. I go by the name Stephen the Dream, Voice of the Carolinas. This is the Stat in the Third interview series. I want to give a huge shout to No Stress Sound Academy for housing the interview today. Make sure if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area and you're looking for a stress free recording session, you come to No Stress Sound Academy. Got a very special guest in the building with me today, man. South Carolina's hit heavy. South sure, Carolina's hit sure, deep. Sure. We got the most electrifying rapper. But he a singer to me. But he said he doing whatever it is to get what he got to do to get what it is like to get what stepping. he want to do. It's like we stepping in this bitch, thing. He stepping. <laughs> Power of music is in hey. the building. What's up with you, my guy? Man, listen, man. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm chosen. I got my kids with me. Daughters just made straight A's in school. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, and I'm still out here being the most electrifying rapper in the motherfucking world. If you don't believe it, ask your girl, your mammy, know your granny, know any chick with some pen in it. You know what I'm saying? They know the vibes. Where this talk come from, man? You, you, got, you, got, you got the talk game going crazy, man. Yeah, that, that's that South Carolina in you, what it is. Man, listen, bro, it's that South in me. It's, it's that South. It's, it's me having to talk myself out of things. It's me having to talk my way out of things and, and get out of little sticky positions, you know what I'm saying? And put myself in positions as well. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta come up with a slick mouth when you come from the south. You dig what I'm saying? What part in particular are you from? Uh, I'm from upstate South Carolina, Clover, South Carolina, and it's like sure, it's sure. really close to Charlotte. We was talking about that earlier. Remember? What county though? Sometimes we stamping it though. You got it. Sometimes, but like when you go other places and you tell them where exactly where I'm from, bro, they'd be like, "What? Is Clover? But it's little, Clover. Little flip? No, nigga, this ain't no little flip." You get what I'm saying? This is South Carolina, Clover, South Carolina. Even coming from South Carolina today, they used to always tell me, growing up, it's one traffic, one traffic light in Clover, you go straight through it. Nah, it's, it's, it's more than that, you know what I'm saying? We done upgraded a little bit. I know, we done upgraded now. Wiley, shout out. <laughs> get it. <laughs> but, you know, even coming from small towns, you know, even just coming from South Carolina, it's hard in the entertainment world, but really just, just life. Like, it's a little different down here. The things we may face, we see. Um, talk about it from, like, Maybe like an inside perspective first, like where'd you come from in particular, like maybe a street, a particular place, like that people may know or maybe they don't know. And then tell me maybe like, even when you go outside, cause we face a lot of racism down this motherfucker, no lie. But a lot of it, it be within too though. You know, we got to face it in house and then we go outside and see some shit there. So talk about your experiences. Me personally, man, I am from Clover, South Carolina, man. Right beside the block, right Mobley Street. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but like I say, like you just what you just said, bro. What I want to reiterate on is, we come from a lot of racism, man. You know what I'm saying? And like you say, it's in the house. It's niggas hating on niggas. You know what I'm saying? Especially when we come from. Especially. You know what I'm saying? You want to be a rapper? You want to be a promoter? You want to do interviews? You want to do podcasts? You want to do anything to uplift somebody else? People always want to tear you down. And as a rapper coming from the spots I'm in, like, <laughs> bro, it's nothing but a bunch of crab in a beer, a bunch of niggas just want to pull down the next nigga. You know what I'm saying? And to see you going up. They want to pull you back down. So I'm from, I'm from Clover, South Carolina, man, like I said before. And it's a small town. It's so close to Charlotte that people want to label us as yeah, Charlotte. part of Charlotte, but we're not. It's different. Charlotte is Charlotte is its own monster in its own. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to come out of a place where people just do not want to see you make it. And whatever craft it is, it could be you could be a skateboarder and niggas want to push you off your board. Niggas don't give a fuck. Damn. You get what I'm saying? And it's like everybody wants to be the same thing. Nobody wants to go like step into another lane and be like, you know what? I'm good with the camera. Let me go to the camera. Let me go over here. Let me be this person. Let me do this. Everybody wants to be that person behind the camera. Everybody wants to be that person with job. the cameras on. Come on, my nigga. That's not the job you want. I do this because I'm good at it. A lot of niggas cannot rap. A lot of niggas cannot be that person. You, you managed, though. You done. I mean, we're, we're getting there. You've you done some other stuff, too. But yeah. I, yeah. I've... Uh, Let's take it before, like, let's go to Lil Pyro. Before, before there was a Pyro, you know, it's a little firecracker, baby. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, little starter. Um, what, what were you like as a kid? You got siblings? You uh, I got one brother, man. I got one brother. And as a kid, I, I didn't want to be a rapper. I didn't want to be mm. a rapper. I was running around because I, I was fat. You fat kid? And I was a fat kid. You know what I'm saying? Twinkie I'm eating mug, look. look. Listen, Kool Aid eating. drinking that, look. Eating, <laughs> got down Looney Tunes. Watching Looney Tunes, eating Twigs, motherfucking cereal. Early morning. You know what I'm saying? Notice that Twigs, that's chocolate, nigga. I was eating chocolate, eating nigga, cereal. But listen to this, man, nigga. I, wanted, I, used, I used to want to go around and tell niggas, I want to be staff. I want to be security, bro. I want to be the nigga that got 
Security on the one. Security? Man, listen, bro, I didn't want to do nothing else. All I seen was niggas outside the block. They had their security uniforms on. And I thought them was the niggas, because them the niggas that can get you in the club or not let you in the club. So I thought they had all the juice. I was like, damn, bro. That nigga right there, he, he, he won't even let the coolest nigga in the club. You know yeah, he got all the power. He got the juice, but then the bitches want to come up to him. Like, yeah, uh, uh. That's what I did. I, I grew up beside a club, you know what I'm saying? So every night, pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? I used to just want my seat. I wanted one song played at the block, the one club beside my house. I wanted that song spun there so bad that I thought life was as big as getting your music played at the block. Really? I didn't think that's nothing. That was your biggest aspiration that, that you saw. Biggest aspiration. So when we say do music, man, that's all I heard. I heard a club outside my house. And, and I always wanted to be the one that everybody was in the club. You know what I'm saying? Jumping for, you know what I'm saying? And any family do music? Any like, did you have uncles or your pops or anybody just that was around that you might have could have saw to be like, I right, this it's it's close enough. I know that club. That's right there. So I mean, I got I got uncles that did music, but I wasn't technically around them mm -hmm. enough because we got kicked. Like we we left Gastonia. My cousin was a uh, part of the Gambino Boy Crime Family in Gastonia. Yeah. They was robbing like uh, casino houses, stuff like Gastonia? that. Gastonia, yeah, they from Gastonia, and they <laughs> was robbing casinos all the way down south. Uh, the, the lucky horseshoe, all that type of shit. All the lucky casino houses that you got on 321. My cousin was robbing. He ended up doing 18 years. He just got out like four years ago, Mark Impill, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the police came knocking one day when I was real young, and they had the news crews with him. And my mom was like, enough of that. We move you down south. <laughs> gotta get the hell on. Uh, we, get, we getting you down in, in Clover. And, and did, that, Clover. did that save you, keep you from going down that light in a way? Is it like, was that something that you had to see or you remember early on? To I remember vividly. I remember vividly a lot of things. The, the worst things, the worst things is what you always going to stick to and what you always going to have that, 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 that memory of. And you Pretty always, mean. sometimes you never know, though, exactly what you see because the nigga that you see with that wall of money back in the day, it could have been 21s. And you thought it was, you thought it was everything. You thought it was stacked. You thought you were right now. You thought it was everything. You feel me, but all the time it was nothing. So so sometimes I got to think, too. I, I got to think when I was young, maybe some of the things that I seen wasn't as as bad as it was. But like I say, I got cousins that ran in the house, shot everything. Bro, I've been seeing this from a young nigga. So seeing that being around that of course you want to you, you want to be above that but it i'm sure it come a point in your life where you know what i'm saying you was influenced in some way shape or form was it a turn oh, yeah. as, as a is like as a minor was it a kid and do you now as you look back because clearly you doing great doing better mm -hmm. was it something you needed or was it something that set like what, what guidance, was that turn? guidance guidance For sure. Every, everybody needs guidance and when i say sure. when i say guidance we come from homes man and you know what I'm saying? Yourself probably included. Yourself probably yeah. included. Like, like yeah. you come from these homes that, that ain't all the way structured. Maybe maybe one form of it is, or maybe you see that kid down the street who, who got their shit together, or their parents got their shit together, and you yep. want to be just like that kid. And you close enough to where you know it's, it's possible. But yeah, you know it's possible. I can do this. You know what I mean? Like, I can do this. I can make this happen because he, his people made it happen. Right, right, and now right. You're looking at niggas like that in the street, or you looking at rappers that niggas want around you that want to rap, and you like, oh shit, the baby did this. Oh shit, bro, you gotta, you, you, you was fucking with the baby before that nigga. Oh shit, let me, let me, oh my god, let me. So you just feel like if you could rub shoulders with, with some of these people, or you can get around these people, they could give you the right guidance. That's yeah, you yeah. Who, who was the first person to put you in the studio? Do you remember? Maybe not. Maybe might have been yourself. What was, what was the first? thing you was around like that was like all right because a lot of times i i bump here and people to say like shit it was my homeboy he was rapping he just told me to come start rapping and then you know what i'm saying we ain't even rapping he, I'm, he don't even rap no more now i'm doing the shit but like sometimes niggas just be in the studio all day just you know what bro they way out what was it for you when i moved to clover when i moved to clover my mom's had uh she had married my stepdad uh and his family I, he, he, I had cousins on his side of the family. When I go in the room, I swear to God, my nigga, they had this little sock hanging from the, hanging from the ceiling. Mm. They had the little microphone in it. Mm. And, and, and these niggas was in there recording. Studio. So I'm at the door like listening like, I can do this shit. 
Bust a nigga head down, shoot him with that fo fo bow boom boom. Nigga, everything yeah. was gun balls. I'm on to smoke you 30 times in one song with 30 different guns, bro. I had a bazooka. I was shooting at the police. I was like that. And you couldn't tell me shit. Niggas was telling me, bro, you fucking seven years old, bro. You I'm about to say what you f- you was feeling it though, wasn't you? Man, I had my first strap at six. I was <laughs> I'm telling you, I I had a bazooka shooting at the police, and I'm telling these niggas I got the best bars on the on the block. They telling me it's real though. Yeah, it's real, nigga. Yeah, it's real. And it wasn't real worth <laughs> the fuck. It wasn't real worth the fuck. Well, no you real about it. My imagination the passion was real. real. The passion was real behind <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was you had to be a thug with a gun. We got them to make it as a as an artist. Man. That's interesting. That's that sound real familiar to kind of what what it is right now, concept, right? Well, what it is right now, like yeah. that's that's blocks what it's blocks, blocks and blocks. That's all you got. That's, that's what people on. If you ain't doing that, you know, you you said it yourself. You ain't got no scrap, bro. If you ain't got no scrap, you're not making it as a rapper. You can Our people do not allow that to happen. Our people. <sighs> Do not allow that. We keep ourselves down, bro. We are the only race of people that think that shooting another nigga is cool. We are the only race that think that, oh, yes, yeah, sliding on somebody I used to go to school with is what's Ooh. up. That's what's up. No, Ooh. nigga, that's not what's up. I used to go play ball with that nigga. Nigga, why ain't you still playing ball with that nigga? You know what I'm saying? What's the problem? What, what went wrong down the line to make you have a problem with this nigga? Because you want to call him an op because this nigga's from a different street in yeah. the same city as you? Right. You want to slide on that nigga. Now y'all niggas thinking that that, uh, that what ops, oppositions is the cool thing. No, nigga, make you some money. Make you some money. If you can rap, really rap. If you can't do shit but talk about Glocks and how I shot you with this and how I shot you with that and how I killed you with this and how I'm trapping over here. Mm. Nigga, nigga, if you can't do that, you're not a rapper, bro. You're a gangster rapper. Stick to that lane. Put that shit in, your, in front of rapper. But that's you know what I'm all, saying? That's, Put that's that in front of respected now. That's what's respected, they say. That's what's respected. They want us to knock each other off. They want us to knock each other off. They don't make good music no more. When people do make good music, they call it, they call it, what they call that shit? They call it um, knowledge. Conscious. Shit. Conscious rap. Nigga, that's not conscious rap. It's rap. It's real rap. It's that shit. Right now, I can control your emotions. I can spit some shit to make your bitch dance through the microphone. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I that's can true. That's all music is. Of, you feel me? I can make you feel some type of way. I can play on your emotions with my music. I can make you happy, sad, depressed, mad. Speaking of that, niggas, all this depressed music, all this go pop a perk and go to sleep mm. type music. All drug this, music. That drug Design music. Design a drug music. That's what it is. You niggas is junkies. You niggas is, you niggas talk this shit, but go to the club and think y'all turned up. We popping bottles, we popping bottles. Y'all niggas is substance abusers. That's what y'all is. That's substance abuse. It's like 700 for a bottle, bro. You feel me? Come on, my nigga. The same bottle I got in and the I'm car. And I'm a promoter. I'm just, I just be sitting there like, <laughs> All right, down. Go ahead. y'all go ahead do your thing, bro. Have have fun, but but you you saying all that to say like it sounds like you're not really too happy with the state of just how this whole uh, thing is in terms of the the rap. And, and I, I'll even go more specific. What's your thoughts on um, R and B? Because I, I I put you in a more not to put you in a lane or a box, but I think you're a more melodic artist more than anything. I won't even say an R and B singer, but you do. Uh, tune and harmonize on your on your joints. So, what's your what do you think of R and B? Because the last, let's say, like maybe the last one we really had that was like a sensation. I was, I'm gonna say like August Alcina. I ain't even gonna give Bryson the credit. I ain't. They're cool, a lot of them guys, but they don't collab. When you when the last time you heard a, a Bryson and a rapper or something, you know what I'm saying? A, I said tight beat after that. What, we, <laughs> but but Trey songs, you know what I'm saying? Used to be on everybody track in yeah. 09, 2010. Chris Brown was killing it, you know what I'm saying? Early on, and now that just don't happen no more. I think that's the problem with R&B. Yeah. What's your mind and your state of just how that music is right now? Niggas, niggas don't like females no more. Oh shit! Uh, I think they ain't making I music think, for the. They make me. You know what? It, maybe it's the, the type of females though. Maybe I niggas think, making music for the. the I mean, these skis is the ratchets. These these skis is bad too. But you know what I'm saying? These skis is only these skis is only go off of how you how you. What you what we putting out there though? Yeah. yeah. Them. It's basically like when you go to the club and you got this nigga that come in and he buy his homie a drink before he buy a female a drink. Or like you go to the bar and then you got niggas that will look at a chick down here and be like, damn, she bad. Yeah. Damn, this is yeah. Oh, you buying a drink for her, but you gonna buy one for the bro, nigga? So I mean, give me a drink, nigga. Get a drink, bro. All right, fuck it. I ain't gonna go in the bar in the club, popping balls with each other. Up. You can't. The music won't let you. You get what I'm saying? If you walk over here and everything is get my glizzy, 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 glock, pop, 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 pop. How you gonna slide on a chick? You get what I'm saying? You can't walk up and say no, nothing like, excuse me, miss. What's your name? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't say nothing. Right. You get right. what I'm saying? You can't slide up to her. You can only slide on a homie. You can slide on the block. 
know what I'm saying? But you slide on a, on a piece of pussy, then guess what? Now you, nigga, you simp ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? No, nobody want to do that. But then you go to their music, and even these young niggas, they want to sing on these tracks. It's just they depressed because they feel like they done lost so much. Now they sitting out here just whining. You get what I'm saying? They want to sing. They want that melodic tone, but it's all they're into whining. it. They're whining. They're <laughs> whining. You whining because you pussy. And these niggas is out here talking to them, oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah, homie. I just lost a homie. The RIP to bro. Everything on Facebook and Instagram is LL. Long live, long live, long yeah. live, long live, long, long live. Long live. Come on, bro. Like, you think that's real cool to say long live? No, nigga. Make that nigga live long. I'm killing these niggas, but won't kill that coochie. But won't kill no What's pussy. Wrong with you? Won't kill that pussy. Niggas won't even go. Niggas won't go kill some some homework. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> these niggas is stupid as fuck out here, bro. You know what I'm saying? But can tell you how many liters is in a damn is in a lean bottle. Oh, they know that. Yeah, yeah. they they got that chemistry right. They got they chemistry right. You know what I'm so saying? so how how do we um? I mean, how do we change? Like, what do you what do you bring to the table to just just to kind of maybe do something different? Like, what do you want to see it as? Because you know, coming into the lane, you got it. Like South Carolina is still open. It's an open door. Like we still waiting on somebody to really kick that motherfucker all the way open. I shout out to everybody that's yeah. running through it now, but. Yeah. You know that I mean, part of it. I mean, Try to play it like it wasn't like it wasn't that move. Like it wasn't what it was. Like it wasn't what it was. So when Drake came out and everything was all sentimental, man, that's when you started. That's when you started really, really combining the gangster with the with the sentimental and all that type of stuff. I kind of fell into that era because what I was going through outside that was a good era. Was not matching what I was saying on on, on wax. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you had some cap in your rap. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of cap in my That's rap, a cap you know in rap. Some people won't like, admit that though. It's you, like you nobody could, nobody could, nobody could just say that they rapping everything fiction, everything non-fiction. Some of this shit is fictional. You know what I'm saying? Storytelling, really? It's storytelling. It's the art of storytelling. You know what I'm saying? Like Nas broke down a whole gun for you. You know what I'm saying? And spit Back. about a gun. Crazy gun. And, and spit it completely different. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like people don't really, they don't really love the art of music like that no more there is no more art of music now it's just now it's just niggas in a video wanting to be seen and wanting to be memorialized mm. because when they gone they want their homies to be like this is my homie right here you know what i'm saying there's more dead homies than it is niggas actually pushing their homies you feel me so if you can take the guns out of the videos if you can give it if you can give videos more art than savagery yeah i feel like it, it maybe could do something the carbon footprint that I have alone, I don't believe like I don't believe it's too big. I don't believe it's big enough. I don't believe nobody has the 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 power to change the generation. Right. I believe they could spark it. But they can't. Spark. It, it's gonna take a lot of. It's gonna take a couple of. It's gonna take a couple. couple of. It takes a couple. Pyro music. This done the third interview series. Where you get your name from? Pyro music. I love fire, bro. I love fire. I'm you an arsonist, bro. Man, God, back in the day, back in the day when I was uh, going to my grandma and them, like I said, my grandma used to uh, get me more than my mom did at the first beginning. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like I said, a lot of us. I was in the back. I was in the back trying to smoke on a little, uh, what was it, a cigarette butt, a little door rail ultra light. I remember what it was. I was smoking a door rail ultra light. I lit that bitch up, puffing, puffing. <laughs> I get the coffee and that shit. Toss that. Toss it. Boom. I ain't think about where I was tossing it. I was in the woods in an abandoned house. Was on when I was smoking, tossed that bitch in there, and uh, poof, up goes oh. the couch, up goes, up goes everything, you know what I'm saying? Damn. And I sat back and I watched it just catch fire, and then the police that came and everything, and everybody's sitting trying to figure out who did it, and I'm just a young nigga just sitting there like, I ain't saying shit. Look at that, that's pretty. <laughs> the fire, the fire, man. You know what I'm saying? Nah, 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 nah. But like, power of music, man, I spit hot shit. 
spit hot shit. I, I no doubt line, you know what I'm saying? But I spit very hot shit. Everything that I try to bring, I try to bring fire to it. I try to bring electricity to it. If I'm on somebody's feature, I'm trying to heat that bitch up. Yeah. If somebody paid for it, I'm trying to heat that bitch up. Any song I'm trying to bring a life to. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? And, and fire is the creator of all life. So being that you pyro music, um, being that you from South Carolina, I seen my first time really getting a, a glimpse of what you had going on, um, that SRT. They say it's a fast car. Yeah. It's SRT. Yeah. And, and not only it was like, you, you kind of made a statement because, you know, we, we got taught, you know, Boosie been all up and down the Carolinas, but yeah. the connections you seemed like you was able to make in that, yeah. um, your video is on his platform on his page. How, how, how that come together? How, how you get connected with Boosie? How you, you know, you, y'all work together? What's, what's that? Uh, niggas in the street, you know what I'm saying? My homies and shit. Sure. Um, like I say, I had went to, uh, I had went to Compound Studio. Oh yeah, shout out to Compound. Boy, shout out, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Compound. My nigga Juju had, uh, had introduced me. I had went, the, the first time, first time I had ever recorded there, uh, he was like, damn, this shit hot, bro. Like, like, this shit hot as hell, bro. I wish you was here when, when Boosie come. Mm. And you say something, something like that, nigga. I'm thinking like shit. You know, boo, what, what that nigga? Do? Right, right. What you mean? You got, you got the inside, nigga. Let me get that. So all the time he was like, man, Boosie coming in here at eleven o'clock in the morning, bro. He doing a feature with Hot Boy Shack. Shout out to Hot Boy Shack. Sure. Uh, oh, okay. Now I got the timeline down. Yeah, I know where you at yeah, with it. Yeah, this, this, this is outside. This is before outside. outside. For outside. sure. So, uh, so uh, I was like, shit, bro. Fuck this session. I gotta get in here with Boosie. I did the, the feature with my nigga Steve. I did the feature with my nigga Steve. And he was trying to think of other songs in the studio, but my mind was already tweaked out. Yeah, right, Boosie coming. How much is it for me to be you with ready. Boosie? How you much is it being with Boosie? He was like, man. Da, 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 da. He told me the price and whatnot. God damn, I just start calling. Mm, mm, I'm calling yeah. everybody. Yeah. My homies, they ain't picking up. I'm calling my man. And he ain't, they ain't pick up. None of them was wanting to the goddamn. None of them was wanting to believe this shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I call my nigga Billy Hatch, man. Okay. Uh, Billy Hatch, man. Real street nigga, dog. You know what I'm saying? He had a, he was like, man, power, man. I'm over here gambling, dog. What's up, nigga? I was like, man, listen. Boosie gonna be here at 11 o'clock. I need that, bro. He said, man, word, what's the ticket? I told him, blah, da, 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 da. Man, listen. I ain't gonna cap with you. You know what I'm saying? I told him, 7K. You know what I'm saying? So... He, he, he bullshitted with me all night to about four o'clock. Boy, still trying to get some more bread. Yeah, still over there hustling. You know what I'm saying? Hell, it hot the table. Compound stayed with me all night, bro, to about four o'clock in the morning, dog. And his his manager, Hakima, you know what I'm saying? She she they didn't they didn't think I was faking. You feel me? They really believed in me. I sure. Him, I gave him the, the truth, like nigga, this is what I'm finna do. I'm finna go get this money. I'm coming the fuck back. You know what I'm sure. saying? Sure. So uh. What talk, I did was, talk, talk, what right. I did was, I got this motherfucking money. <laughs> I got this motherfucking money. Uh, I waited for my nigga Hatch. Hatch pulled up, and instead of him pulling up with seven k, he ended up pulling up on us. He ended up pulling up with twenty five thousand dollars. He said, "Power, I got twenty five thousand on me. Bro. I got twenty five thousand on me, bro. You just hold this strap, <laughs> hold this strap, <laughs> everything straight." Right. So we pull up at one of these hotels down here in Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? And whole time, bro, we had linked up it his apartment was right upstairs bro and Damn. so we ended up going up to the top uh we ended up going to like a little it was like a little uh platform that you had to go up some more for the vip yeah. section of the hotel so we get there so everybody the epicenter and shit so uh we go over there we get up there to boozy and i open the door and it's that nigga and me, I was all fanned out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I was all fanned out. Oh <laughs> shit, it's Mr. Bad. Badass. Right that nigga, that nigga badass right there. And I'm gonna tell you, I got the strap, so I'm feeling like security now. You know what I'm saying? I'm in security. Back in your little kid, bro. Yeah. You felt like you, <laughs> nigga, you living out your dream nigga, for real. <laughs> and I'm forgetting, this is a, this is a damn superstar. Man. Hey, not a nigga, right? Hey, me, not a nigga, bro. Stop <laughs> pulling that thing. What you doing, bro? Because the whole time he got security. He level. got seven. <laughs> Look, cool. niggas ready to collect on no, eight million dollars. I'm ready. I'm like, nigga, yeah, ooh, what's up, man? Man, what's up? <laughs> That's all I got. Was a what's up? And then Hatch went in. He was like, man, boo, I got an extra two K for you. Right. And he just listen to my nigga Pyro right now. And 
I said, damn, nigga, listen to me. You rap too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, I got an extra 2K right now. You listen to my nigga Pyro. And Boo was like, man, we straighten everything out in the morning. And we didn't even go home that night. We slept at the Cracker Barrel right off of <laughs> the Don't us been trying to get far at all. Yeah, we slept all, We slept on the crack. We slept at the Cracker Barrel. And uh, I had my boy go to Walmart and get me a white tee. I could not miss this show. We didn't go to sleep. We stayed up from that moment all the way until... We recorded the song the next day. We didn't even have a song ready. We just, my nigga, I can hear the streets calling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, that's what it is. Shout out the streets calling. That's so dope, man. So just, that's a, that's a big move. That, was that early in your career, though, too? Or had you? I had, I, had been mess, I had been messing around with the music. That was the first time that I had been to Compound. So this was about, mm. this was around about the time I first started making professional music, professional sound that wasn't in the closet, that wasn't, uh, like distorted type but you see that that networking don't really really do it like you got to get moving around and and you say it like uh i like how your monica ghetto rock star like i think that's you know what i'm saying kind of fitting even even your sound like i'm listening to songs like um like sky you know it's a lot of emotion push a man you know what i'm saying where you can really hear that that um emotion in your voice like that what, what you're bringing to it and then um I kind of compared you to not again. I'm just putting you in that light, but like Don Tolliver, even to where like your melodies is kind of you know that sound that you're making. It's like an instrument. Like I'm hearing your voice as an instrument. How long did it take you to really start doing that? Was that the start of it, or or, or have you really had to work to get to this point to where it sounds? I ran from that. I ran from that for so long because, like I said, I was raised in the church. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I was raised in the church. Just like a lot of boy. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, when I when I kind of left the church alone to go pursue more of the street and, and find my own identity, because uh, that's what everybody really wants. They the people who run away from the church are really people who are really looking for their own identity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Bible say that, that the child is gonna stray, he's gonna find himself, but he always comes back. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah. So one thing about it is we out here finding our identity. We always give thanks to God, but uh, I feel like I, I crafted my own style. You know what mm. I'm saying? Because I could have went plenty of different ways. I could have just went the singing route, the R&B route, but I feel like I crafted my own tune. I crafted my own instrument, like you said. Yep. And I, uh, I chiseled away at it, and then I found it to where I could switch it up easily. I could, uh, I could give it to you raw. I can give it to you sentimental. On the uh, ad libs, I can make a, I can make a rock song. I can make mm -hmm. the song sound rocky. I can make that SRT sound like a rock. Like, yeah. it sound like a, I ain't going to lie. If you close your eyes, it sound like a white boy supposed to be coming around that corner on that NASCAR, busting them lefts, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a NASCAR, baby, for 26. It's a stroke. Yeah. No bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like, I feel like to give everybody every aspect of what I am, the day that I die, the music that you hear from me that's left over, because you out, you know, this music going to outlast. All of us. Everything that we do on this earth will outlast our bodies. Are we leaving him? So I want this music to be like Michael Jackson when you play it. I want it to be golden. I want it to be scriptures. I want it to be something that you can hear and not think about shooting and killing the next nigga. I want it to be something that's just like you say, a ghetto rock star. I want yeah. you I want you to think of a rock star when you think of me. Think Jimi Hendrix. You know mm. what I'm saying? Think Led Zeppelin. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Think ACDC. Think that. Think the niggas on stage. That, that those some influences. Are. Those some influences. Do you listen to some of those? I listen, to, I listen to a few, man. I nice. listen to a few, and I really like ACDC because I like that style on stage. You know Who you I'm listen saying? to when nobody around? When nobody's around, I like Drake. You like Drake for sure. No, I, I, I like Drake. And I Everybody like, got them certain things. Some people yeah, want to admit it. Like yeah. I'm, a, yo, you I'm, listen to certain certain I'm things. Chilling, if I'm chilling mostly, bro. I listen to the baby. Nothing else. Charlotte only. Really? You know what I'm saying? Really? Real Carolina shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not listening. I'm not trying to listen to Atlanta. I'm not trying to listen to everybody else. Detroit and all that. I like ESTG because I feel like he, he pushed a different wave. But really, I'm a the baby type nigga. We need to push the niggas that's close to home. If we ain't pushing them, nobody else gonna push them. You know what I'm saying? The baby, the baby, the baby, the baby, nigga. So, the billion dollar baby, nigga. All that shit from Charlotte, nigga. I like that shit. You know what my, I'm saying? My guilty, uh, my guilty listen lately is uh, Glorilla. I've been, I've been like, oh, I've been listening when I'm by myself. <laughs> hey, <laughs> when the nigga, I just, he'll go buy some more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the flaw of what it is. I'll be like, bro. she be snapping, bro. bro, bro she be snapping. Bro. That's my guilty listen right now. If I'm looking. 
Bro. That shit on, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. bro. I'm my shit. Yeah, I'm sick. I'm sick of all that shit, nigga. Bro, you seem like you were like Glorilla, bro. And I'm not playing, bro. Like for real. But I like how you said I'm. Gonna- yeah, you know, it's not not awesome. You know, it's just one of them things. Everybody ain't gonna rock with it, but nah, but she nah. hard. I wanna give her flowers, but you know, what I'm saying I say that more to say people are influenced by. You know, we we listen to certain stuff, but sometimes you don't want to listen to certain people because you don't want to be, you don't want to sound, you don't want to make that music as artists, right. so you don't want to fall into that. So, um, I think your music really speak for itself. When I hear you, I I know what it is, and I'm, and I'm recognizing that. Um. But we've been keeping this interview real peaches and cream, real berries, bro. But like, talk about, talk about, look, we from York County, bro. Everybody ain't it. Everybody ain't it, bro. And I'm going to be the first one to stand on it. Everybody ain't doing what everybody doing, but won't what they see the next man having. I see a lot of people from my area, never been to a show in Charlotte. Never Mm -hmm. stepped foot at one of the showcases in the city, but be upset when... Niggas don't be named to be getting mentioned. Don't be getting talked you know about. They song don't get played. And I'm I'm a promoter, so I'm I'm speaking on this to let it be known. But you you've reached out. I've I've seen you go to other platforms, go out of town, step out. What is with our city or our not our city, but our area, you feel like the entitlement, I think. Niggas you know? feel like they ain't gotta do a goddamn thing. Nigga, I'm proud of music from York County, the hottest nigga in York County. You ain't finna find nobody putting in more work than me. You ain't finna find nobody hotter than me. You ain't finna find nobody with a better influence than me. You ain't finna find nobody who you can listen to every song without pushing repeat on that motherfucker hotter than me. You ain't finna find nobody who's doing the most work I'm doing out this motherfucker. You see me over here. You see me over there. You see my name over here. Oh, I seen about name three niggas from York County on that uh, off the porch. Three, maybe maybe t- three or four. Porch. It might have been, and that ain't Man, even the off the porch. Them niggas on off the porch, bro. This is what they do. They get a little bag, they yeah. get some change, yeah. and then they say they rappers. You know what I'm saying? Yep. A lot of these niggas, bro, like I'm not, I'm not no, uh, what's, I'm not, I'm not money mom. I'm not, I'm not them mm. niggas. I'm not doing mm. none of that. You get what I'm saying? I'm me. I'm the realest nigga from Carolina, from York, York County, South Carolina. Shout out my niggas in North Carolina. Sure. All that shit. You get what I'm saying? I'm a real nigga that's really out here moving, trying to do my thing. I don't just got. Thousands and thousands of dollars right. on, on hand just to buy no chain and just say that I'm goddamn like that and I'm putting on. A lot of these views, niggas get paid views, nigga. A lot of niggas get paid views. I don't do that. I get all my shit organic. I get all my shit authentic. A lot of them niggas don't know how to collect their money if they did get paid, though. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, dog. A lot of niggas is, is active because they, they got the help. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I, got, I got management. My management don't help me like that. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'm out here buying my own features, buying my own. Fucking studio time, shit like that, right there. My niggas help on the back end. You know what I'm saying? You gotta invest in yourself, so that ain't. You don't invest in yourself. You don't deserve this shit. That's the key. That's the key. I was hoping you said it right there, because if you want you all the stuff you don't had to do, regardless, it was by connection, by favor, by pay. You had to figure. Hey, this was what it is. This what we gonna do. That's what I want. I'm going to clubs where I know I ain't supposed to be at. You know what I'm saying? Shot at and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm tired of that shit. Like that shit gets really aggravating, bro. Nigga, we just we just went out the other week. I'll probably be going to a show. I was gonna say what's what's the other what's the other side of this though? Because you you know you mentioned that and I, you know we we read and we see, you, but it, it's the reality. You've been to a couple shows where it's been some shootings, been oh yeah, situations bro. where you personally just been in the mix, not not per se that, but just in the mix of like the aftermath of everything. Right. Just take me back to you know what that was and, and maybe even why. Like is it is the street still so much, you know, that, or is it niggas mad because of the music? What, what you think? What, Man, you, what you feel? I'm gonna tell you right now, bro. It's, it's, it's both. It's both sides. It's both lanes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was just, I was just in my hood. It was a shooting in my hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Out that motherfucker supposed to be goddamn going to a show. We don't go to the show. We stay in my hood to do a damn show. I mean, to basically, goddamn, turn up the block, turn up the hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Leave that motherfucker, niggas get the pop, 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 and we don't know nothing about what's going on. I'm saying like. Niggas get to shooting over that bullshit. Do I think it was because of the music? Nah, I think it was because all the attention niggas was getting. You get what I'm saying? But is that coming from the music, though? Yeah, more than likely comes from the music. You know what I'm saying? Uh Like I said, it's a lot of hate in the streets, too. You know what I'm saying? We really really doing street music. A lot of niggas live the music that they rap about. You know what I'm saying? Juneteenth, like he was talking about earlier. Yeah. Juneteenth. 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 Oak Ridge, why he held old buddy until he had passed away. You know what I'm saying? God rest old buddy's soul. You know not to get too much, my, my bad, not, not to interrupt, just get too much into it, but so if someone that got shot, they essentially bled out, you was there to... Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, he got shot in the, uh, he got shot in the back of the head, uh, 
And like I say, I held him to the ambulance came. I held the, the towel on the back of his head until he uh, tough, until he went until he went to sleep. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I say, that's just some that's just some shit that niggas don't talk about. You don't see shit like that on the news. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear about rappers doing that. You know what I mean? But like I say, niggas had me all over the internet going crazy talking shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I was really helping somebody to their last breath was taken. You feel me? Right. They like that, bro. This ain't no this ain't no bullshit. Just before that, we went to a freedom walk in Kobe, South Carolina. It was a peaceful. It was peaceful. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was very peaceful. We go to another little event, June, uh, Juneteenth event, uh, Oak Ridge, South Carolina. It was a peaceful event. Everything was peaceful. Everything was neighborhood. To niggas from outside of that area come mm. in and do some stupid shit. Niggas get to doing whatever they did, and then now you got two dead people out here at an event that was supposed to be for freedom walk to to uplift black people. That they was free, you know what I'm saying? And me being the artist that I am, I'm not just gonna speak for that shit. I'm gonna really see if I see you down on the ground, my nigga. I'm gonna try to help you, bro. I'm gonna try to help you. Anybody from my team try to do that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, this ain't no bullshit I'm spitting, nigga. This ain't no bullshit I'm spitting. Like. I show love to a lot of artists, but a lot of artists do not. They don't put the work in. They ain't in these spots where I'm at, man. Definitely you know, show love. They ain't, making that, they ain't making them moves like I'm trying to make, bro. And I'm doing this off of the strength of me. You feel me? How do you? I'm sure off the strength of me, bro, because I love this shit. How you keep your, uh, like, your head above water? Because with this stuff, like, you know, we, you, you spoke, like, it's depression in us. It's like, you know, everything ain't easy. I is, don't. is it a song? You, you don't. You, you I don't. You do. I don't. I don't Oh, bro, I'm, I'm mm. drowning. I, mm. I'm drowning. Like, niggas don't understand what the fuck is going on. You get what I'm saying? A nigga is drowning, but I make this shit look good. You feel me? I make this shit look good. Them bubbles that come up, mm. them bubbles that come up, bro, they, they slow down, bro. You get what mm. I'm saying? I'm drowning, but I make it look good. I make it sound good. You know what I'm saying? I'm going, I, I go through the most shit. People, people see it, see it, the, the tip of your head, and, and see it's just right there, but don't realize you're kicking like a motherfucker below, just to goddamn stay right. And, and you know, I I really appreciate you with just so coming up here saying that, because people will see you and think you know one way or another, but not realize like, damn, if he going through it and I'm doing this, then you you might say somebody just now, you might have related to somebody that ain't ever thought, damn, that's really what it is. And, and that's what it is. Th- if you can, um. And I don't know if you really, if you do, but is there a song somebody could point to that, or that you could point to that you made that expresses that, or that maybe has helped people from that, or helped you? Man, I got a, I got a song, man. It's called Still Remember, bro. I never put okay. it out. Okay. Okay. That was my fault, man. Why you won't put it out? Man, a, a lot of things. I got so much music, bro, and I be so, I be so nervous and so embarrassed of my own music. Mm, yeah. That's that artist. A that's lot that of times, artist, man. A lot of times yeah. I sit on it because it's too, it's too. It's too emotional. It's too. It's too real, and I never think that. Oh yeah, they just gonna vibe with me like that. And I, I, I try to keep myself an image for myself. Mm-hmm. Certain things I just withhold putting out so bad because it's my. It's my. My inside won't let me put it out. And you I might not even be in that mind when you made the song. That might have been months ago, and now you put it out, and you might have been about a person, and you ain't even got that same feelings about that person, and now it's energy out there that you done brought back so i get music is definitely something that uh it's it. not for everybody always yeah. but it can it's a release for you you know if i got any song to point out to man go listen to sky, sky yeah pyro i like music, sky man. pyro music get a rock star go listen to sky man and and usual you know what i'm saying because those two songs bro that that let you know me that let you know the emotional side and then and then it also let you know that you know what i'm saying i remember thinking niggas getting money wasn't usual but now i know better we're gonna let it fall like this mm. you know what i'm saying straight like that i used to think niggas got damn niggas getting money wasn't usual you know what i'm saying but it's it's very normal for for another nigga to get money sure. you know what i'm saying it's very normal and we should treat it like it's normal we kings my nigga we kings, nigga. Start acting like goddamn y'all running out of resources. Like, like they running out of money. Like you could be the only nigga to blow up and you got to go at it with the next nigga. You know mm. what I'm saying? Start acting like that. You feel me? They ain't running out of resources. They print this shit every day, nigga. Every day. Pyro Music. This day in the third interview series, man. I really appreciate you uh, spending some time with us up here, man. I think, yeah. I think the people really done... You know, they take some time to watch this and, and see. They're going to see that you... It's deeper than just the artist, bro. It's, 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 go watch it. it's deeper than that. Um, Before we get out of here, I know I need some bars from you. I know I need some, some 
So we, we, I'm, I'm gonna get you set up so we're we gonna get everything right. But uh, let the people know we got some new music coming. We got some. What's 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 on the lookout for this uh this fourth quarter? Well, we, we into the third quarter, so we in the third. So we, you know, what I'm saying starting off the half, the second half, right? But what we looking to in the, this final 2020 this end? So man, I'm planning on releasing a. Uh, I'm planning on releasing an EP for myself, and uh, I'm planning on doing that. Uh, I say November. November okay. The, November the 18th. Yo, we'll see you again soon. My my, we'll my, my mother's soon. birthday, November the 18th. I'm, I'm gonna drop something for that. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna be five. But right now, make sure y'all go check Ghetto Rockstar, man. Ghetto Rockstar. Ghetto Rockstar. Ghetto Rockstar. Pyro Music, man, with two K's instead of a C. Two, two K's instead of a C. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to York County. My nigga got down Steve the Dream, you know what I'm saying? The voice of the motherfucking Carolinas. Nigga, you dig what I'm saying? I appreciate you having me up here, dog. Power of music. The most electrifying rap in the motherfucking world. You don't believe it? Actually, Gary, your mammy know your granny know any chick with some pennies. No, you did. Talk that talk, yes, sir. So what we'll do, um, make sure y'all give us a follow at this, that, and the third interview series for more interviews, clips, and freestyles. Want to give a huge shot to No Stress Sound Academy for how I was in the interview today. Make sure y'all follow me at Steven the Dream. That's S T E P H E N T H A Dream. I am the voice of the Carolinas. Pyro Music is in the building. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back.